Kaysen's disease, which is also known as decompression sickness, is a condition that occurs due to a rapid decrease in pressure in a person's environment. This is mostly common in scuba divers, which is what I'll examine in this video, but it can also occur in those traveling by plane if the plane cabin is not pressurized. Now, I'm sure you guys have all experienced the feeling of an increased pressure. For example, when you jump off a diving board in the summertime at the pool and you swim to the bottom of the deep end and you feel that pressure in, on your ears, yeah, that's exactly what we're talking about here. In the same way, when a diver goes deeper to the ocean floor or the bottom of a lake, their surrounding pressure increases. Now, within the scuba diver's tank, there's a mixture of gas of oxygen and nitrogen. Oxygen, as we all know, is very necessary for our breathing. But nitrogen is very chemically unreactive in our bodies, and it's not really used for any main body functions. So whenever we inhale it, we pretty much just exhale it right back out. When scuba diving, however, the nitrogen diffuses into your body's tissue until it is able to be exhaled properly, and that occurs when we reach the surface of the water. Okay, so decompression sickness then occurs when a diver ascends to the surface too quickly, and the nitrogen, instead of diffusing into the bloodstream to be exhaled through the lungs, it bubbles and diffuses into the body's tissues, blood, and muscles. And now, throughout this presentation, I will illustrate why this happens and what the consequences are. The first time that the effects of a decrease in pressure were actually observed occurred in the 1600s. And it wasn't on a human, but on a snake. Sir Robert Boyle, who we all know is famous for the Boyle's Law, in the year 1670, placed a viper inside of an airtight container and then sucked all the air out of this container using a vacuum. Then he noticed the effects on the snake. He saw that the body of the snake swelled up severely and it also developed blisters. The first time that this effect was noticed on humans was in France in the 1800s. A guy named Charles John Traeger developed a system of coal mining using a pressurized container known as a caisson. Notice that's where the name of this disease comes from. And many of the coal miners experience decompression sickness when coming to the surface of the earth. At first, they say alcohol was the only source of treatment for these miners. But later on in the century, legitimate, actual treatments kind of came out uh, and were developed. Uh, cold water baths, um, natural oils uh, of the earth that they found, um, mercury, complete uh, submersion of one's body in mercury, uh, quinine, and even leeches were uh, used in treating decompression sickness. The symptoms of decompression sickness vary from case to case, depending on the individual. Factors include the individual's previous medical history, their current physical condition, their use of drugs and alcohol, and the depth and duration of their dive. The more mild symptoms include pain, which is also referred to as the bends, uh, which is in reference to the joint pain wants to make you bend over, so that's why they call it the bends. Also, dizziness, fatigue, and confusion, uh, severe itching, skin rashes, and even skin molting are some of the mild symptoms. Uh, more severe symptoms include paralysis, brain damage, heart attack, and even death. Also, another visible sign of decompression sickness is the enlargement of the body due to the nitrogen, nitrogen gas that did not diffuse back into the lungs during decompression. Truthfully, no symptom is really out of the realm of possibility when it comes to decompression sickness due to the fact that the nitrogen gas bubbles can affect any tissue within the body, the blood, the bones, the nerves, or the muscles. A diver must allow time, when ascending, for the nitrogen to diffuse into the bloodstream, where it can then travel to the lungs. For this to happen, the diver must slowly swim back to the water surface, taking long breaks at several different water levels in the col water column to allow this process to occur. The symptoms of decompression sickness show up when the diver ascends too quickly or even bypasses the pauses of their ascent. If the ascent is done too fast, the nitrogen does not have time to enter the bloodstream via diffusion and instead will bubble and enter the tissues, muscles, and the blood. If this bubbling does occur, the result is decompression sickness, and this requires medical attention. In an emergency case of decompression sickness, the patient should be administered oxygen and their blood pressure should be regulated if possible before moving on to further treatment. 
Ideally, however, as soon as possible, the patient should be placed in a hyperbaric oxygen chamber. These are chambers that involve pressurizing the air surrounding the patient, similar to that of when the patient was diving, and then slowly decreasing the pressure. This is supposed to reverse the effects of the nitrogen bubbling inside of the patient's body, similar to how it occurred. While this is happening, the patient will also be breathing 100% oxygen. Now, over an extended period of time within the chamber, the nitrogen will be released from the body, curing the patient from Kaysen's disease as a result of this pressurizing and depressurizing. Now, hopefully, if you ever go scuba diving, you're safe when doing so so that you don't get decompression sickness. Thanks for watching.